following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Uranon por Humanon, the vertical path to heaven or the straight path to wisdom. Por Humanon is a Greek word derived from por Humanae, por Humae, meaning propelled, depart, transfer, to pursue the journey on which one has, has already entered, to continue on one's journey, to go beyond physical life, to follow somebody. This is to become his devotee, to lead or order one's life. Gnostically, <coughs> Uranon is translated as Uranus. So the title Uranon por Humanon means to ascend to heaven or ascension to heaven. In Kabbalistic terminology, heaven is the first instance, the psychological side of the cosmos, human, which is uh, absolutely different from the physical body, Malkut, although it is inside yet higher than it. It corresponds on the far side of the visible heaven, which is the planet's atmosphere that does not belong to it, but to the physical earth. Therefore, when we read about the ascension of Jesus in Luke 24:51 and in Acts chapter 1, 9 to 11, when we read that how he went to heaven, we read uh, the war Uranon por Eumenon. Uranus from heaven and por Eumenon, the journey, which is a psychological uh, initiatic development that the initiate is taking. This means that the Bodhisattva, through initiation, went to a place where no believer can go. The Bodhisattva went to those spheres which in Kabbalah are named Sephiroth, within the world of Yetzirah, which is hidden from the eyes of the flesh or to that which is earthly, three-dimensional. Here, the Bodhicitta is developed by ascending to his aditum in uh, Latin, meaning uh, the Bodhicitta developed his cosmic inheritance through the nine heavens. 
The Aritum in Latin means the Holy of Holies. So, Uranon or Uranus is translated, as I said, uh, in Greek as heaven. So, according to Greek mythology, Uranus is the father of Saturn. And when you see in the tree of life that Saturn is directly related with Bina. And, of course, Bina is an emanation of Chokhmah, which in the tree of life is related with the zodiac and with the planet Uranus. So, in other words, when you read about the ascension of Jesus in the Bible, it is, of course, written at, as Uranon por Eumenon, which means the ascension into the heaven of Chokhmah. That's why it is stated that he went up to heaven and was seated at the right side of Keter, right side of the Father. You know, Keter is the Father. And if you observe, the Sephirah Chokhmah is at the right side in the tree of life, related with the three primary forces. So, in the Bible, you find that Jesus said, when he was, of course, talking, representing the cosmic Christ, because this is something that we have to understand, that Jesus of Nazareth was an incarnation of the cosmic Christ, of the solar logos. So, when he was talking, the solar logos was talking through him. So, in representation of that sort of logos, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. That is written in John chapter 14, verse 6. Of course, we had to study how this ascension or how this poor human is uh, done in each one of us. Because, of course, uh, this is what we want to ascend to heaven. This is the purpose of every soul in this planet to acquire that which we call the religare, Latin word for religion, which means the union, the yug in Sanskrit, with Keter, the union with the Father, which is in heaven. That uh, union, that religare or religion that the soul, that the Buddha wants from Malkut, which is the physical world, is uh, called, of course, ascension. Which we were explaining in different steps in the path of the Bodhisattva. But that here in this lecture we have to synthesize and to point in detail in order for us to place ourselves in the place which we are and to learn and to know how to perform this por humanum this work, this vertical path, which is the path of the Bodhisattva. As you uh, remember, Peter is the, the first apostle, and according to tradition, he's the head of the church, and that... Uh, receive the responsibility from Jesus in order to develop his uh, mission or in order, for, in order to teach this development that we are explaining uh, here in different lectures, Gnostically speaking. 
So Peter, as we stated in other lectures, is related with a pineal gland. That is that gland situated between the brain, inside the brain. Uh, according to the card, there's philosophers, it stated that uh, the pineal gland is the seat of the soul, the human soul. So in the pineal gland, we find that willpower and also the door of heaven. Remember that uh, <coughs> Gnostics, the Gnostics, we say our motto is telema, which in Greek means willpower. So the whole work that we have to perform is willpower. And of course, it is uh, under the regions of Peter. Let me read for you what is written in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 19. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philip, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? See, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they say, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Of course, here is talking about, uh, in synthesis, about the law of reincarnation. That you know, all the prophets always reincarnate. But Jesus said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, an incarnation, an avatar. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. This name Bar Jonah means son of Jonah, the Holy Spirit, because Jonah means dove in Hebrew. So when you say that uh, Simon Bar Jonah, the son of the Holy Spirit, in other words, which is also, as we explain in other lectures, the part of the Trinity which is situated in the pineal gland as well. You see, Peter is in the pineal gland, the Holy Spirit is in the pineal gland, the soul is in the pineal gland. So you find different aspects of the pineal gland in relation with this door of heaven. And uh, uh, Jesus says, For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So when, we say, when he said that, that no flesh... And blood had to reveal that to him. Means that uh, this information that he is receiving is not coming from this physical world. But from the Father who is in heaven. The Father, of course, is Keter. And Keter is also related with the pineal gland. Remember that Keter in Hebrew is crown. And that is, uh, in Sanskrit, is, uh, uh, this uh, crown is related with the Sahasrara Chakra. The Sahasahara Chakra, which means the chakra of 1,000 petals, the crown chakra. So here, behold, Keter is in relation with uh, the chakra of Keter, I mean of the crown chakra. So Jesus continue and say, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give unto thee 
the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So Peter has the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And he says, and, unto, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdoms of, uh, of or the keys of the kingdom of heaven are represented by two keys. One is silver and the other is golden. Gold and silver are the representation of the man and the woman. Of course, Peter in the pineal gland, through telema, to will power, is the one that opens the doors for us in order to enter into Uranus, into heaven, into the world of Chokhmah. So, according to Krumheller, Dietrich, the great theologian, states that the ascension of Christ within all the parts of us, that is, to attain the religare, the you or union of the mind, the man, the chitta, with divinity, which in this case is Budi, Chochma, Keter, one must accomplish it through four ways. First, to receive God, the Eucharist, which is the transubstantiation. Second, amorous union, which is sexual magic, consubstantiation. Filial love, to feel oneself is a child of God. Communion. And the four is death and resurrection. Self-realization. Of realization. So we have to accomplish these four ways. In order to perform this ascension that we are talking here. This is important. Because if we accomplish with the four of them, we will attain, of course, the union, the religare, the yug with Keter, the Father, which is our longing. So when we talk about the Eucharist, we have to understand that the Eucharist is related with the world of Hod. And uh, the bread and wine obtain the three aspects of the absolute, which are the the ain, the ain sof, and the ain sof or the solar absolute. We have to receive the Christ from the ain sof or through the ray of creation in order to charge the bread and wine in the world of Malkut. When we talk about the Eucharist, we have to understand that the Buddhas, the souls here in this physical world, need to be guided. Often, the disciples, the neophytes, the devotees, ask for guidance in this physical world. They want to know how to work in themselves, what to do, what steps to follow. And that's why we give lectures, uh, we uh, instruct the different uh, students that come into our website, to our school, but uh, we have to understand and comprehend that the best instructor that exists in the universe is Christ, which is the ends of all. No one can guide the soul better than the Lord. 
That's why it's here, behold, the necessity of what we said, eating the flesh and drinking the blood, the blood of Christ. Which is a symbol that we accomplish when we uh, perform the rituals of Hod, which are related with the Last Supper. These ritualistic uh, procedures were taught by the Master Jesus of Nazareth before uh, entering into his passion, the Last Supper. It is written that uh, Master Jesus uh, put some drops of his own blood, as well as the disciples, put some drops of their own blood, and also their own flesh in the bread, mixing that, of course, with the wheat, mixing that, of course, with wine, in order to unite the astral forces of Hod, of the astral bodies, and to accomplish a great mission for this humanity through the Eucharist. This is how it started. Of course, this uh, magical ritualistic element is something that uh, was performed not only by Jesus, but many other uh, great avatars and masters in the past. If you read, for instance, uh, in the Old Testament, you find how uh, Abraham celebrated the eating of the bread and the wine with the king of the earth, Melchizedek. So this uh, Melchizedek, which no father, no mother, celebrated the Eucharist with Abraham in the Old Testament after the defeating of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. And of course, uh, uh, this ritualistic element was repeated in different epochs in different temples. For the mixture of the flesh and the blood of great avatars in the beginning is a ritual that uh, extends through the Eucharist to the bread and wine in any religion. It is stated that at that time, when the Master Jesus knew that he was going to be crucified, and to leave this planet, he wanted to keep his help in, uh, uh, through his disciples, through all those souls that will enter into the path to the Eucharist. And it's because his own essence, his own being, a paramartha satya, a being from the absolute, from the ain, was willing to execute this great sacrifice through these vehicles. Of course, uh, his blood was charged already with the solar force of his own inner being, as well of all the, his apostles. And that's why, by putting the drops of blood in the wine and by putting uh, small particles of their flesh in the bread, they celebrated that as a beginning for the Eucharist. That's why it's stated that really indeed the apostles and Jesus share the blood and flesh of all of them together. And from that magical element of work that they performed 2,000 years ago, uh, the solar logos perpetuate that help through the Eucharist. This Eucharist is not a property of the Catholic Church, of the Orthodox Church as well. It's performed and was performed in many religions in the past. Since that time when the astral force of the Savior of the world was mixed with the planet Earth, since that time, through the Eucharist, when it's uh, rightly celeb celebrated, when it's in the right way celebrated, the people, when they eat the bread and drink the wine, they are, of course, uniting through the pronunciation of mantras 
through the special prayers, through the solar logos, through the solar absolute, to the Ain, a place where is, of course, a, a place for the Paramatta Satyas. Remember that Jesus of Nazareth belongs to the Ain. So, when the Eucharist is celebrated, the priest and the priestess, because should be a priest and a priestess in order to, to, to this uh, uh, Eucharist to be celebrated, to be performed. The priest and the priestess become a channel from the ends of Or to Malkut. And through them, the force of the Logos that work, of course, to the Master of Ramento and his apostles, enter and charge the bread and the wine that uh, the disciples drink. And this is how the solar logos, the Christ, enters into the organism of those initiates and guide them in the path of the civilization. For this, of course, those uh, celebrants have to be serious in the work. Because the Logos only enters in order to help, in order to guide the souls. So it is impossible to attain the self-realization without the Eucharist. That's why it's celebrated and that was, it was instituted, not only by Jesus, but by all their avatars in the past. We the Gnostics know that the Eucharist is something uh, important because this is uh, through Hod. This is the magical work of the world of Hod. That is, of course, the world of the, the sun. Immediately after Malkut. Remember that we stated in the other lectures that uh, we need to build that vehicle of the Lord inside of us. That vehicle of the Lord is called astral body. So, the essence of Master Jesus, the essence of the cosmic Christ, incarnated in all the avatars, enters into us and transforms itself into the seed, the sexual seed, the semen, that we have to transmute. That's why the second aspect of this ascension that we had to perform is called amorous, amorous, amorous union. In other words, the sexual act, sexual magic, which is called consubstantiation. So the priest and the priestess that perform the transubstantiation, the Eucharist, must be, of course, in chastity. They must transmute the sexual force in the sexual act. That's why it is stated that a priest has to be married. And a priestess, of course, married. This is how it was instituted in the past by the Master Jesus. All the apostles... Followers of Master Jesus were married. They were not single. And of course, when the Master is already resurrected and have all the bodies within, he can perform the Eucharist as a single person, even if he is not married. But in order to perform the ritual of the Last Supper, the Eucharist, a priestess has to be there present as a symbol of the feminine aspect. Otherwise, that Eucharist, that transubstantiation is not performed. Because it's by the two polarities how the solar force enters into the bread and wine. And this is something that we have to understand. Because the transubstantiation is a symbol of the consubstantiation of men and women in the sexual act through alchemy, through the signs of chastity. 
In other words, no fornicator, even if he receives, of course, the, the bread and wine, will acquire anything. If this person is not in chastity, cannot acquire anything. So that is the main thing. That's why in Gnosticism, in order for any Gnostic to celebrate the Last Supper as was instituted by the Master Jesus, first has to be in chastity. It has to be observed. Because just to perform that just for fun or for curiosity it doesn't make anything. It has to be some, somebody serious in, in, in the work. In order to perform this por humanum. Because this is precisely what the Gnostic what? To perform the por humanum within, you know, to be united to Chochma, which is Uranus, ruled by that planet, mysterious planet. No, the planet Uranus is a planet of Aquarius. This planet governs and directs the sexual glands as, and is 100% revolutionary. So, in other words, we will say that Aquarius, which is represented by that uh, water giver from heaven, is the Lord itself. Because Aquarius, or Uranus, is in Chokmah. And from Chokmah is how is delivering this energy, this force of the cosmic Christ. This is how we have to understand how the Eucharist work. Because we have to receive God. This is what the Eucharist. But remember that God is not a person. God is an energy. This is what we have to understand. It's an energy that emerges from the ends of as the ends of or the light. And divides itself into the Holy Trinity, Keter Chokma Bina. And the most beautiful atoms of that Ains of Or shine in Chokmah, which is Uranus, which is that heaven from where the Lord descends through the ray of creation into Malkut, when the Eucharist is performed as it should be performed. Of course, uh, during the course of this lecture, we are going to explain how this porjumenon is acquired and how do, need, how, to, how do we need the help of the cosmic Christ in order to perform it. Because no one can go to Keter but through Chochmah, the cosmic Christ. And of course, that's why he says, I am the way. I am the life. And the truth. So see, this is the way. So this amorous union, of course, as we explain, uh, has been explained in different lectures in the books of the Master Sabael. He explains about the transmutation of the sexual energy in order for that ascension to be performed in the physical body, in the astral body, the mental body, in all the bodies. Through this uh, amorous union, what we want is to create with our energy that descends and that we eat and drink through the Eucharist to create with transmutation that special vehicle that we call astral body. But the Master Samael on the Or in his book, The Seven Words, explains very well that we had to create our own particular individual Jesus Christ. And that is the astral body. So when the astral body is created, then it resembles the Lord Christ within each one of us. And this is the step, of course, in the way towards Keter. Because we need to create the vehicles in order for the Lord to manifest in order for the Lord to perform that perhumanon, that ascension in us. After the creation of the solar astral body, which is our own particular Jesus Christ, we have to create our own particular Buddha, 
our inner Buddha. This inner Buddha is uh, called in the Bible the Lord Jehovah, the Lord particular Jehovah. She is, of course, the ruler of the mind. That's why when the initiate enters into the four initiation of major mysteries, he creates the body of the mind, the solar mind, and he receives the title of Buddha. But in the mental body that we explain in other lectures, which is similar to an angel, according to the book of Nabucodonosor, Daniel, explains there that the fourth body was like an angel. And this angel develops all the powers of the Holy Spirit. It's a mental body. And beyond, of course, the mental body, we have a causal body. This causal body is the vehicle of the Father. Remember that the causal body is related with Tifereth. And we say that in Tifereth, we learn how to do the will of God, the will of the Father. In Tifereth is how we learn about the first law. Because the second law, which is the written law, written in all religions, is a guidance in order for you to enter into the path. But once you reach Tifereth, you are capable of knowing the first law, which is the law emanated from your own particular Keter, your inner father, which is in heaven. That's the first law. But for that you had to, to reach the first. And then you have, of course, the three vehicles, or the three primary forces. The father that works through the causal body, the Son that works through the astral body, and the Holy Spirit that works through the mental body, the worry of the mind. Hod, Netzah, and Tifereth. These three bodies, of course, have to be created through Yesod. Because when we talk about the amorous union, it's a ritual performed in Yesod. In Kabbalah, we always teach that this triangle is called the triangle of magic. Netzah, Hor, and Yesod is a triangle of magic. So we had to perform three types of magic in the triangle of magic or triangle of priesthood. First, we had to be a priest in Yesod with sexual magic. Second, we had to be a priest of Hod with the Eucharist. And third, we had to be a priest in Etzah by working with the mind in favor of others. When we... No, no. This is uh, Amorous Union. Filial love is the third, which is called uh, la communion, to feel that one is a child of God. Of course, this filial love starts by remembering oneself. But let me first go back into what we're explaining. What we're explaining here, the priesthood, these three type of priesthoods, is a type of uh, magic that we perform. Remember that magic means the way in which we influence our inner self, our psyche, the development. That's magic. It doesn't mean, it's not related with something or tricks that we are going to do outside. It's something that we have to develop inside in the psyche. The, the development, as we said in other lectures, all the bodhicitta, right? So sexual magic, chastity is related with yesod. Then sexual ritualistic, the Eucharist is with hod. And here in Etza, in this very moment, for instance, I am working with the magic of Etza, which is the mind. I'm giving a lecture. I'm teaching. I'm guiding in my own way, in my own level, the souls. The same you can, because everybody is, is doing it in his own level. So you have to work, in other words, with the three brains. Because through the Netzah, work the Father, which is uh, the central nervous system. 
through hard works the sun, which is the grand sympathetic nervous system, and through the physical body, which is uh, the sexual motor center or brain, is the Holy Spirit. So the three brains has to be under the guidance of the soul, of course. But these three aspects of the priesthood is guided by Peter, the apostle. Because all this work that we're explaining here is done through the pineal gland. When you are transmuting in Jesod, you are working through your pineal gland. Remember that Peter has the keys. The, the, the keys means the power to control the two polarities, the silver and the gold. This might be in, in a single person, Ida and Pingala, it's two polarities. But in the married person, is of course the willpower to control the female and male aspect in the sexual act and to transmute and to create within the church, which means the vehicles of the Lord. Without Peter, we cannot build the church. That's why Peter is called the rock of the Assad. So we hold here the importance of Peter. He says, unto you I will give you the keys of heaven. But it's because through the pineal gland is how the Father worked through us, the Holy Spirit worked through us, is how the soul is, of course, working. When we call about, of course, the other third aspect to attain this reality is the filial love. To feel oneself to be a child of God. That is communion. You see, communion comes from the word common union. What is a common union? Well, when you are performing all of this priesthood, you are doing the common union. You are united yourself with your inner being. In other words, all of this has to be performed by uniting yourself with your inner being. That's a common union. You have to remember yourself is how the Master Samael states in all of his books. The self is the being. If one doesn't feel that one is a child of God, how do you want to remember your God? Of course, this filial love or communion, common union with God, is performed in steps. First, you have to put an activity in the pineal gland, your consciousness. By remembering yourself, by observing yourself, you are in continuous union with your inner God. Because God has no form. God is omnipresent. It's here and now. When you are performing your transmutation, whether for pranayama or sexual magic, you have to remember your God. You have to, to feel that you are a son of God. That's why you have to pray. The Master Samael always explains that you have to pray to your inner being during the sexual act. He says that the man has to represent the Holy Spirit and the woman, the Divine Mother. And by remembering that, by praying that, is how you transmute. Because then the energy is rising. And that's the ritual of Yesod, or the priesthood of Yesod. And the priesthood of Hod, of course, when you are in the in the Eucharist, celebrate in the Eucharist, you have to remember yourself. If the priests and the priests are, re- are doing that, of course, they have to remember God. That's why there are special prayers, special invocations, in order to perform that, in order to invoke the inner being, all the parts of the tree of life, in order to perform it. It's not just something that, uh, by a novelty, we are going to do, as we find in the Internet. Many people that are there, like they're making of the Eucharist, like a circus, and uh, adornated with uh, different things, and they think that this is just fun. Oh, and uh, the eyes appear naked. Of course, this is aspects of the negative aspect of the Eucharist, black masses. Because a serious Eucharist celebration is something that uh, all the neophytes have to be serious in themselves. It's not something that should be televised. Right. Or sometimes it had to be put uh, in, in the internet. Because this is a union or, or a performance in which you put yourself in union with God. Filial love. When you are in that action, you have to feel that you are a child of God. Especially the priest. 
There are many priests there that are performing that and they don't even remember themselves. Yes, they are identified with the exterior world. How are they going to bring the energy from the ends of ore? You have to, you have to see there, you have to, to know. And that's why it is important, as Peter teaches, to open the doors of the pineal gland, the doors of heaven, and to have a satori, a samari, at least one time in life to experience that which people call God. To experience the Satori, the Samari in different levels. If one day we experience in Samari the ends of ore, and even the ends of better, because then we know from where that light is coming into ourselves. When we are practicing the ritual of the assault or the ritual of Hod, or when we are teaching, working with magic in the mind. Because the mind is precisely the way also uh, ultimately priesthood. Missionaries, instructors that go and teach these Gnosis everywhere, are working with the priesthood of Netzah. We have not to be selfish. We have to be charitable. And to give the knowledge. That is Netzah. Of course, there are different levels in Netzah. The word of the Elohim. Because that depends on your level of being, how you deliver it. That's why we have to understand when we are in this Gnostic missionary uh, path that not all missionaries have the same level. Missionaries like to frame others and to say it, the Gnosis or the knowledge has to be delivered in this way. All they say, no, it has to be in this way. Right. But you have to understand that the way is the way of the Lord that expresses itself in different levels in everybody. And here, of course, in Netzah, is where we find uh, Simon the Magician, which is the opposite of Peter, which do the same thing, or does the same thing, I mean, deliver the knowledge, but is not following the Lord. Peter followed the Lord. The keys of heaven are delivered to Peter. So we have to follow Christ. But Simon the Magician and many other uh, Kabbalists that know about this tree of life and about the magical work of the third triangle of priesthood, they do many things, as I said. Rituals in Hod, they deliver the knowledge in Netzah, but they are fornicators in Yesod. So therefore they are just bubbling. They are not connected. Because remember that the Lord says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And the life is forced is in your sword. We have to know how to handle it. So Peter, through the pineal gland, opens the door of heaven so that Christ as energy, the son of the living God, enters within the initiate. And in order to you to understand these aspects of this doctrine that we are explaining here, let me read for you the chapter 21 of John, the Gospel of John, verse 15 to 23, in which is uh, explain how the Lord delivers all of the work to Peter. It is stated... So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? He said unto him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said unto him, Jesus said unto him then, Feed my lambs. And then Jesus said again unto Peter, the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? And Peter said unto him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. So Jesus said unto him again, Feed my sheep. 
And then Jesus asked the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I said unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walked whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, you shall stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither, whither thou wouldest not. This is spake he signifying the way in which Peter was going to glorify God. And when he has said this, or when Jesus has said this, he said unto Peter, Follow me. So you see that? Peter there is asked three times. In other lecture we talk about the three denials of Peter. But here again, the Lord is asking three times to him. Obviously, this is related with the three brains. Because the Buddha, the essence, the sheep, the lamb, which is precisely there the, that we had to work with, worked with the three brains. But the third time, he was, uh, Peter was worried about it. He says, why he asked me the third time? Well, he will start from above and we go to Yesod. Obviously, that's the main thing. And is when we worry about it. Because the sheep, the lamb, of course, are the representation of the soul. Remember that the Lord Christ is represented as the shepherd. And the shepherd is the one that takes care of the sheep, of the lamb. And we are the sheep, we are the lamb that had to be taken care, be taken care by, by the Lord. But Peter is the one that is going to do it. Or in other words, we will say, the cosmic Christ, the solar force that we are talking here, is going to do it through the pineal gland. Through telema, to willpower, to the human soul, through Peter. In each one of us. So that's why when we study the Kabbalah and alchemy, then we learn that the Lord is capable of doing anything, but Peter is the one that can uh, open the doors of heaven or to close it. All depends how we uh, behave in this physical world through the three brains. In order to be filial love, to perform the filial love. What Moses taught in the first commandment. You shall love your own God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, which is the lamb. The sheep. And Jesus added, and thy neighbor as thyself. So here, of course, this is what we understand for filial love. To feel that one is a child of God is something that we have to do in the three brains. But remember that we are uh, weak in the pineal gland. We don't have that strength, that willpower, then Peter is weak. That's why Peter was crucified upside down, indicating that willpower has to control the three inferior brains, beginning with the assault. Because when Peter is crucified upside down, the head is in Yesod. Meaning the willpower has to control. The mind has to control sex. And from there we control the heart. And from there we control the mind. 
And then we love our Father with our mind, with our heart, with the strength, sexual strength, and with our soul. And the neighbor of thyself. So do you understand that? That's precisely the steps. And of course, when we are performing this filial love, which is the communion or common union with God, in that level, we perform the Eucharist. In that level, we perform the sexual magic. In that level, we perform the sacrifice for humanity. Because we always state that we have to work with the three factors. Those three factors depend on this filial love that we have to perform daily. Daily basis. So I repeat. The for human on is performed through the Eucharist. To receive God, amorous union, sexual magic, filial love. You see how all of them are united? And of course, the fourth one is death and resurrection. Which is the most difficult part of this. The psychological death. Here we have to understand that when we enter into heaven through the pineal gland, when we attain the Samari, the Satori, if Peter is not active, we cannot enter into the superior Sephiroth. Filial love, faith in the consciousness, in the soul, Freedom within God, freedom within the light, is attained to the fire of Arius. Because the fire of Arius, of course, is related with the head, related to Peter in the pineal gland, and in the sex, and in the heart. That's why the main letters of Peter is P T R. And he is the rock, the cubic stone. The rock in the altar of any church, of any temple, of any religion. The Kaaba, there among the Muslims in Islam, that Kaaba, that rock, is Peter, P-T-R. That's the rock on which Islam is founded. An Indian religion. That's why any ritual, any, any type of uh, ceremony, religious ceremony, is related with Peter. And he is, uh, his signs, the signs of Peter, is a signs of sexual magic that we learn through the pineal gland. And in order to be loyal to God, we have to develop filial love. And that's why, in order to see if this filial love is developed through Peter, the Master Jesus asked three times to Peter, Do you love me, Peter? You see? And that Chochma from Uranus, from the planet Uranus, from, from that sphere of Christ, is asking to the pineal gland, to each one of us, Do you love me? In the heart, do you love me? In the sex, do you love me? I mean, are you working with the three factors? That's the meaning of it. So the great master Asiata Shemash stated, related with the three brains, faith of the consciousness is freedom. It's the inner mind is a bodhicitta that's developed, the inner mind, faith in the consciousness. Faith of feeling is weakness. It's in the heart. That is in relation with the intermediate mind that the speaker explained in the previous lecture of the three minds. And faith of body is a stupidity. It's related with the sensual mind. This is what the Master Asiata Simash stated. And he states again, Love of the consciousness or cognizant love evokes the same in response. Cognizance. Wisdom. 
love of feeling. Ready with the heart evokes only the opposite. Love of the body depends only on the type and polarity. No chemistry. And then Asiata Siemash says hope. Hope of consciousness is a strength. When you have hope consciously, knowing what you do, that's strength. Hope of feeling, when you just have hope in something without knowing what, is a slavery. And hope of the body is disease. Because, you know, the body is a transitory element of vehicles that we have. Those that have hope in the body, that maybe in the future, or in the physical world, we will attain something, it's a disease, it's a type of defect that we have to annihilate. So always remember these uh, three actors of the three brain. Faith, love, and hope that we have to develop. That's why by following the sequence of this chapter 21st of uh, the Gospel of John, we read after the three questions. Peter, turning about, sees the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also learned on his breast, or leaned, yeah, also leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? You know, John, the disciple that was leaning his head on the chest of Jesus. He asked Jesus in the Last Supper, Lord, who is the one that is going to betray you? And of course, Jesus answered, Well, to whom I give the bread and wine, he is going to betray me. And who is the one that received the bread and wine? Well, we receive the bread and wine in the Eucharist because we want to be guided, but we have the ego inside. So we are the one that is going to betray him. In other words, Judas. Peter seen. Seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Related to John. Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. In other words, John, as the Master Samael explained in his books, is E-A-O-U arms, the word. And remember that that John, in the other lecture we explained, is related with the thymus gland, with the moon, with the Buddha. But here, in this aspect, is that Buddha already united to the atom nous? Because to the atom nous, in the left vertical of the heart, which is the son of man, this John is becoming a bodhicitta. John is that mind that chitta, that buddhata in the thymus gland, united to the body, which is the atom nous of the heart. Through, so that atom nous of the heart united through the mind, that is the chitta in the I mean, the thymus gland, we find here the body chitta, you see. That body chitta is that John, which always we state is the intuitive mind. The intuitive mind, or that mind that is already united with the Lord. The abstract mind, the abstract man. That is there, ready. He says, what is going... Uh, this man to, to do? What is the man going to do? And he says, don't worry about it. Let him be there. You just follow me. In other words, first we have to perform all of this work that we explained before in order for John to enter into action. And this is precisely related with the fourth aspect of this uh, statement that we uh, said Death 
and resurrection. When we enter in these studies, we have to explain that we enter into different aspects of the path. But these aspects related with the Bible, with the Gospels, are synthesized in three disciples. The first is Peter. The second is Judas. And the third is John. It's a synthesized whole work there. First Peter, that we already explained. Without Peter, we cannot enter into the initiation. Peter is a door into the initiation. Because Peter works in the triangle of magic, triangle of priesthood. If you don't work in this triangle of priesthood, you are not working with Peter. You are not creating the bodies. Peter works with the Eucharist in order for you to work in the sexual magic to create the bodies in order to sacrifice yourself to humanity. That's Peter. So when you accomplish this second birth, Peter is, of course, uh, he done his job. Then the second aspect comes, which is Judas. Judas has to be annihilated. The Judas is our ego. Because without the annihilation of the ego, there is no resurrection. Remember that Judas killed himself in the tree of good and evil. He hung himself there. And then the Lord is crucified and he resurrects after that. So Judas has to die first. If Judas doesn't die, the Lord cannot resurrect. This is psychological work that we have to perform. So this Judas, of course, is in relation with uh, uh, different aspects of ourselves. But in this case, in the path of poor humanos, is related with the death in the physical world of Malkut. Because in Malkut, we want to achieve the level of Ishim. When we enter into the world of Yetzirah, because we are coming from the world of Asia. You see, Malkut is Asia. So from Asia, we have to enter into Yetzirah. Which is the world that we cannot see with the physical eyes. Only those that develop the inner man. The psychological man, the bodhicitta, can enter into the world of Yetzirah. But for that, there has to be a resurrection in Malkut. This resurrection is initiatic resurrection, in which the initiate annihilates the ego of the 96 laws related to the inferior laws of Malkut, and enters into the superior level of Malkut as Ishim, or as the Bible calls the initiates, the human beings. This aspect of work was explained in previous lectures. In other words, related with this lecture, when Jesus resurrects, from the dead, he is ready to ascend to heaven. But this resurrection, related with this lecture that we are giving, the explanation of Uranon per Humanon, this resurrection of Jesus is only related with Malkut. Meaning that he is coming from the abyss, the 96 laws of Klippoth, and entering into the world of Ishim. Ish is man in Hebrew, and Isha is woman. Uniting both male and female in one is Ishim. And that is only the first level of Yetzirah from the bottom, Ishim. So when somebody is Ishim, is already a human being in the complete sense of the word. Has no ego in Malkut but has other elements. It's just a human being, or we will say, in other words, an Edenic man that appears resurrected and then enters into the path of John, 
You see? John is waiting there, which is the Borichita, in order to acquire all the levels of the ascension. Because the initial has to ascend from Malkut into Yesod, into Hod, into Netzai, into Tiferet, Gwebura, Hesed, Bina, Hochma, Keter, the nine heavens. But nobody can rise up into the nine heavens. At first, it doesn't come from the abyss. We are inhabitants of the abyss. We are indwellers of Klippoth. We are, in other words, demons. This is something that people don't like to hear. We are demons that have the opportunity to become human beings. When we enter into this path, and then we enter into the world of Ishim. But the world of Ishim is all this path that we explained already here. And as Ishim, we enter into what the Master Samael explains as the second mountain. After working with Peter and after working with Judas, annihilating him. And then we, can, we have the right to ascend to heaven. This ascension, of course, this poor human on that we are spending here to Uranon, to Uranus, is performed in three steps related with the three triangles of the tree of life. And the first step, let me read for you. And the first step is related with Yesod, Hod, and Etzah. Yesod, Hod, and Etzah. In Yesod, this Ishim transformed himself into an angel. According to Christianity. According to the scale of hierarchies given by Christianity. But in Kabbalah, we call this Kerubim. The Kerubim. So you transform from Ishim into Kerubim. This Ishim, according to Christianity, are called human beings. True human beings or initiates. And they enter into the world of Yesod and they conquer the level of angel. From the world of Yesod, we would say they die and resurrect there. Because it's a death and resurrection in this level of Yesod in an ascension. When you ascend in that, and then you acquire the level of angel. And then you are ready as an angel to enter into the world of Hod, which is called by Kabbalah the Beni Elohim. And, and as an angel, you have to die in Hod and to resurrect there and to ascend. You see? into another level, and acquire the level of archangel, according to the hierarchy of Christianity. Because according to, I repeat to, Kabbalah is called Beni Elohim, which means the children of God. As a children of God, as an archangel, according to Christianity, you enter then, you have to enter there into Netzah, and to work in Netzah in order to annihilate those psychological elements of Netzah to die there and to resurrect there and to ascend into the world of Netzah as Elohim. Of course, according to Christianity, these Elohim are called principalities. So, then you finish the first step, the first triangle, as a principality. And then you have to write to enter into the world of uh, the ethics. In the same world of Yetzirah. That's why the world of Yetzirah is called, according to Kabbalah, the world of formation. And of the angels. Or the different hierarchies. So then you enter into Tifereth, Geburah, and Hesed. Into that triangle. And in Tifereth, you transform yourself into a virtue. Here is where the Master talks about the causes of the ego. 
that you have to annihilate the causes of your ego. You see how higher is this? This is how you have to understand that. That you die there and resurrect there and ascend there and become a malakim in the world of Yetzirah. And from Malachim, the world of Yetzirah, you enter into the, uh, the Seraphim, which are the hierarchy related with Geburah. The potencies, according to Christianity. So in that level, of course, you die, resurrect, and ascend to heaven. And as a potency, you enter into the world of Jupiter, which is Hesed. And you transform yourself into a dominion. Or as the Kabbalah called, Hasmalim. Of course, your bodhicitta is expanding and expanding and expanding in the measure that you die, resurrect, and ascend in each Sephira. That's called the porjumenon. And of course, as a dominion, you enter then into the upper triangle, which is the upper triangle, which is the logos. Keter chokma bina. And as a dominion, you enter into bina and uh, has to meditate and annihilate certain elements there that the master explains very well in the three mountains. And you die, resurrect, and ascend there. And become a throne. Aralim, according to Kabbalah. A throne is an Aralim. And from an Aralim, you enter into the Sephira Chochma. And become a Kerubim. According to Christianity. You see, because when we talk about the Kerubim, we're in Yesod. But according to Christianity, they call it Kerubim in the world of Horma. But in Kabbalah, it's called Ofanim, which are the wheels, called the wheels. And uh, when you enter into Keter, you transform yourself in Seraphim, according to Christianity. But in Kabbalah, you call it Hayot HaKadosh. So you know, Hayot HaKadosh trans- is translated into English as the four holy creatures. And uh, when I said this, it, it is coming into my mind, the book of Ezekiel in the Bible. In the first chapter, he states how he is precisely at that level. Because he sees the four creatures which are related with Keter, Hayot HaKadosh. And of course, he says that these creatures are within four wheels. And those wheels are called the Ofanim of Chokmah. I mean that Ezekiel is already ascending at that level. That's why in Gnosticism, we have the famous invocation of Salomon. This invocation of Solomon, Solomon is how your being, the priest, is invoking those forces in order to be united to all the hierarchies of Yetzirah, which are, of course, the Ishim, the Kerubim, the Ben Elohim, the Elohim, the Malachim, the Seraphim, the Hasmalim, the Aralim, the Chokmah are called the Ofanim in Hayot HaKadosh, which is Keter. We do that invocation in order to attract the forces. But of course, the initiate has to perform that in his poor human own. And this is a work of patience within, within which the Bodhicitta acquires all of those levels. In the Vedas, uh, according to the Vedas, it is stated that 
In Keter, we acquired complete dominion of the elements of Hayot HaKadosh. And according to the Vedas, Atala is the first plane directly emanated from the Absolute. This is called Atala in the Vedas. The hierarchies of this Atala are the Dhyani Buddhas that belong to this plane. They are in the state of Parasamari or the state of Dharmakaya, a state in which there can be no progress because they are completely perfect entities which are only waiting for the cosmic night in order to enter into the Absolute. Then we have the second plane according to the Vedas and related with Chokhmah, which is called Vitala. The celestial Buddhas that have emanated from the seven Dhyani Buddhas are in this Sephira. And of course, we have the third Loka of Sephira, or plane of consciousness, which is called Sutala. In this plane, we find the plane of sound. And to this plane is, with according to the Vedas, the Buddha Gautama Sakyamuni reached. He reached this uh, level when he was in this world. So this is the plane of hierarchies of the Kumaras or Agnis Vatas. Agnis Vatas, according to the Vedas. Of course, then, but when we, when we go down in relation with those beings that are not self-realized yet, that are in the process, we find that Atala is also related with Hesed and all the upper triangle. And then, the, according to the, to the Vedas, they said that the Ford coming from above to below is Talatala. The fifth is Rasatala. The sixth is Mahatala. And the seventh is Patala, which is the physical world. Atala is the world of the mist of fire, or the world of the innermost. Vitala is the world of the consciousness. Sutala is the world of willpower. Talatala is the world of the mind. Rasatala is the astral world. Mahatala is the ethereal world. And Patala is the physical world. So all the monads descend from Atala in order to evolve into Patala. When we say that the human beings are in Patala, here, we are related, of course, to the Ishim. Those human beings that can control the elements. So, this is how you understand and how to comprehend how this ascension, how this development, how this union of religare that we want to achieve is performed. First, we create. And even after creation of the internal bodies, and even after celebration, all the second birth, we have to keep, of course, performing these four steps in every level that we are reaching. Because I remember, for instance, the Master Samael on the Or, when he was ready at the top of the second mountain, he became a seraphim, according to Christianity. Or, according to Kabbalah, he was a Hayot HaKadosh. When I met him in Mexico, he was a Hayot HaKadosh. He was in the same level of Ezekiel, when he was seeing the wheels and the four creatures. He was completely clean, resurrected and ascended into the world of Keter. And he, at that level, he was just preparing himself in order to enter into the world of Bria, which is another world above Yetzirah. But in order to enter into the world of Bria, you have to pass, as we explain in other lectures, the ordeal of Job. But that ordeal of Job comes only after the ascension, complete ascension, unto the upper levels. That is why it is stated that when Jesus started that ascension, disappeared from the earth, and nobody, can, nobody saw him. Because that is, of course, not related with the ascension in this physical world. People think that Jesus ascended physically 
in this three-dimensional world and went to heaven, the atmosphere, or maybe to the planets in, in the space. No. That, when that is explained in that way, we have to know that this ascension is a psychological initiatic ascension that the initiate performs in the will of Yetzirah. And of course, the will of Yetzirah is immediately after Asia, which is the world of Malkut. So everything that is performed there is out of the sight of this physical world. As we explain. And he ascended and seated at the right side of Keter, which is Chokmah. That's precisely the, the, the steps. And that's precisely the way that we have to perform. It's not like the people think, oh, I'm going to believe in Jesus, I'll raise my arm, and immediately I will go to the Father. This is something serious, uh, serious work that we have to perform. First Peter, then Judas, and then John. How are we going to perform John? How is people, uh, or people going to go into heaven as they uh, believe that they are going to perform the porjumenon just by believing in Jesus? Meanwhile, they have the ego ally. They didn't annihilate Judas. How they're going to ascend or resurrect with, the, with Judas, with the ego alive? And how they're going to resurrect and ascend if they didn't work with Peter? First Peter, then Judas, and then John, and then we are done. This is how it's written in the Bible. It has to be performed. This is how we have to understand it. Otherwise, we fall into mistakes and thinking like the fundamentalists in this day and age that they really think that just by believing or reading the Bible, and this is it, then somehow they are going to go in the clouds and the Lord will come. Now, the Lord comes in the world of Yeshirah and takes you in the different levels in that ascension, not in this physical world. In this physical world, the only thing that comes in the atmosphere in this day and age is a smog, unfortunately. Do you have any questions? In different parts of the Bible, it talks about the sons of God. Is that referring to Daniel? Yeah, when, when you read in the Bible about the children of God, of course, it's related with Hod, the Ben Elohim. That already are at that level. But also could refer to those Bodhisattvas that already are resurrected. When they say that the Ben Elohim descended on the earth, which means in Asia, in Malkut, and took women. Right? That, that, that is the meaning uh, written in the Bible. So, unfortunately, when you read the, the Bible, uh, different names written in Hebrew are translated always as angels. You know? They don't make any difference. If they were write in, this, in the right translation, then you will understand better. Unfortunately, people uh, do not know Kabbalah and they just tra translate the words in their own way. A lot, a lot of people think that because they belong to whatever church they belong to, that makes them a son of God. Yeah, people think that because they belong to this church or to this denomination or to this religion, they are already children of God. Well, we have to explain. We are children of God, but... In which level are we children of God right now? We will say it, we are only in a 3% children of God. That's why the beginning of this work is filial love. To feel that one is a child of God. But we have to start in the level that we are. We are just in the, in the level of Tlipoth. We cannot say the level of Malkut. Because all of us are in dwellers of Tlipoth. So from Klippoth, we start trying to enter into the world of Malkut. And that's the work of Peter. And by now in Judas, we enter into the world of Malkut. Being a child of God, of course. A Ishim, as the Bible says. And like that, and then we start developing more that filial love. So when we reach the level of Chokmah, of course, that filial love, son of God, it's right to say. That's why Jesus was at that, at that level. Master Samael was at that level of Yetzirah. And that's why he always said, I am the son of the Logos of Mars. But he was no ego there, completely. 
But how we can say, for instance, I am the son of such and such monad when we have the ego alive? That's a joke. Was we have to be frank, we have to say, well, I am the child of God in a 3%. And I'm trying to achieve more percent, percentage of that level of filial love with my psychological work, with my alchemical work, that is, of course, a process that takes years. It's not just by raising the arm and saying, oh, I am a child of God. To remember God is being, yes, your question? The question is, even if we enter into the level of Hod or into the level of uh, other levels of the Sephiroth, all of, us have, all of us have the same level? The answer is no. All of us have over different level, levels in each Sephiroth. Even when we are, for instance, in meditation, remember that we said that Peter has the doors of heaven. When you meditate and you enter into a Satori or Samadhi, you escape as burata, as essence, as soul, through the pineal gland. And then you can have a samadhi in your soul, in Hor, in Tzau, or any of the nine heavens. And in there, the inhabitants, the citizens, that are already established there with their hard work, they welcome you and they teach you. But of course, you are in the very lower level. You are just a beginner. And even if you create the bodies and you start ascending according to initiation and you enter into that level, you discover that you are developing. You are ascending according to your own inheritance in accordance to the level of objective reasoning of the bodhicitta that you are acquiring. For instance, if we investigate the Master Jesus of Nazareth, Master of Eramento, in Hod, he's a very high hierarchy. Then we were Master Samael, we discovered also there, but it's not that high like a Master of Veramento. That's why in the world of Hod you find all the archangels have different levels of objective reasoning, understanding or comprehension. But all of them are self-realized in Hod. But in accordance to, it's like when somebody receives the title of doctor, or physician. All of them are physicians, but all of them are skillful in different things, specialized in something. Because they develop their consciousness in different levels. And related with Hod, precisely, the archangels work through Hod in the Eucharist. They take places. In the spring, for instance, Master Samael explained how the, how the angels uh, work to the Eucharist. It says that the archangels of Hod assist us in spring. Raphael is acting. In summer, Uriel. In autumn, Michael. And in winter, Gabriel. These archangels are vehicles of the ains of ore. Through them, the solar force, the cosmic Christ, concur at the Gnostic rituals in order to assist us in our path. So these uh, archangels, of course, work, as you see, with this, uh, four seasons in different levels in order to help us because they manage different forces. And as well, when you enter there in, the, in this uh, Sephiroth, you develop according to your own level. That's, uh, that's the path, right? The work. This is how you have to understand and comprehend. Any question? The archangels are related with the elemental forces? Are they yeah, of course. All the archangels are related with all the forces of nature. They control them. But uh, really, uh, any archangel uh, control the forces of nature according to the commands of Jehovah. And this is a good uh, uh, question. 
because when you investigate the tree of life, you discover that the first time that the name of Jehovah enters into action here is in the world of Chokmah. The world of divinity in Chokmah is yod he bab he yod Chava or Jehovah. In other words, this Jehovah related with the world of Atzilut is Christ itself. So that's why in the Bible it is stated that all the archangels work under the order of Jehovah. Which, of course, uh, work in the physical world according to the law. Mechanical laws of nature. The forces of the elements. All the essences that come from above work. That's why when you are working with magic, you have to always work with archangels. Because the archangels work through chokmah into the elementals. In order to perform the magical work that you want to do in your own behalf, or in behalf of humanity. For instance, right now we are teaching, Master Samael explains in his book, Ignius Rose, that when we teach this doctrine, we are working with the magic of the pomegranate. The pomegranate is precisely uh, a tree, which is a symbol in, uh, among the masons. One of the columns of masonry, or both of the columns, have on the top always a pomegranate fruit. Right, and it's because this uh, elemental related with this tree is in relation with uh, charity, with friendship. So when we want to make uh, friends or charity in favor of humanity, we are working with the pomegranate tree, which Archangel, of course, is uh, uh, related with Uriel, uh, is a Venusian monad or elemental. There are many rituals uh, through which uh, Gnostics uh, perform uh, benefit for humanity. That uh, little by little, the Gnostic is learning how to apply it in his life, uh, into his path. You have to buy the book uh, of medicine, where the master explains about the elemental therapy work with the elementals. And also the book that is uh, going to come in a while that is called the Igneous Rose that explains how to work with the mind according to the Buddhic path. What is that called? Igneous Rose. Igneous Rose. We will have it uh, in short. And this is how you are to learn. The Master Samael del- delivered all the knowledge you see, in his books. Not like people think uh, that, uh, that he committed a mistake. No. All the books are written for, for a reason that we are explaining here. Some uh, ignoramuses think that the rituals of God are not necessary. We are here it's necessary, even before the resurrection. Because Christ is the one that takes you in the way. He's the life. Without the uh, Eucharist, without the magic of the fir- lower triangle, Yesod, God, and Tzah, we are just fooling ourselves. Thank you very much. And uh, any question, you can place it in the forum. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.